welcome back. It's been a while since we did a video. It's one of those things where life gets in the way and we just don't have time, but we're building the Gavilani Hills Vineyard here at Paradise Ranch. Please subscribe below, join us, and we'd love to have you join our adventure. This is what we have been planning for the last year, working on for the last six months. It's now chapter seven. We're ready to plant our vines. We started this project by laying out the vineyard and then we um, set some posts, made sure we had the lines set up the way we wanted, figured out the density of the, of the vineyard. Uh, we drilled the holes for the vines ahead of time before we put up our trellis wire and the irrigation. We also did some soil testing. We wanted to see how our soil will hold up when we're working on the vines. So the the, the, the recommendations we got were applied to this planting process. So let's get started. Typically I try to do these videos over by the vineyard, but it's going to be a little over 100 degrees today and my camera does not like sitting in the sun. You know, any more than about three or four or five minutes my camera gets so hot it won't film. So we're over here in the shade today. So let's get started. First, I want to apologize. <clears throat> we planted our vines a little over three weeks ago. And in the process of planting the vines and trying to get the 200 vines in the ground, we completely forgot to actually video putting the plants in the ground. There's lots of videos out there showing you how to plant rootstock vines. I put a link to a couple below, um, specifically from the company that we purchased our vines from, I have a nice little rootstock video on how to plant rootstock. So you can go ahead and take a look at those. So let's get started. And obviously, we can't just plant the vines. There's a lot of steps we've got to take ahead of time to get these plants prepared and preparation to plant the vines. So let me go through those right now. <clears throat> First, let's talk about gopher deterrent. How are we going to keep those god dang gophers away from our vines and not to kill our new vines. I mean, I would hate to come out <clears throat> three years into this vine dead because a gopher got to it. Gophers primarily live six to 12 inches below ground. The surface roots are. What I want is I need to get these young vines growing and get some feeder roots really developed down below where the gophers are. So I need to keep the gophers away from my surface roots. But how am I going to do that? So what am I going to keep these gophers away from my roots? Broken glass, crushed glass, literally broken glass in the holes. So when the gophers get close to the vines, they have a little deterrent to keep them away from my vines. I actually use this glass mixture on everything I plant, flowers, roses, trees, and the vines. I use the same glass mixture to keep the gophers away from my new vines and my new plants. Over the past year, I've been collecting primarily wine and beer bottles. I place the bottles into a heavy duty trash can and using my large sledgehammer, I broke the bottles up into small pieces. Once the glass was broken up into these small pieces, I then put the glass into five gallon buckets. Now, I was not sure if I was going to have enough glass for the 200 vines in my vineyard. So I purchased some additional glass online called Coors Premium Glass Abrasive. This was a great purchase. It really added that additional deterrent that I was looking for to keep these gophers away from my vines. So I got two bags of 100 pound Coors glass online. And then I, in combination with the glass that I had broken up, I put them into these buckets. And you can see here, the coarse glass makes it more of a sand kind of look, and then my broken glass. This was a great combination in putting into the vines. I had about eight buckets of glass, each one weighing about 60 pounds or more, which gave me almost 500 pounds of glass to, to plant with all of my vines. 
As I said, I use this glass in everything I plant and it has been a godsend. Um, and I'll show you some evidence later. Let's talk about the rootstock specifically, the vine rootstock that I'm using and the process I had to go through. I'm gonna read this little piece here. Grape growers use rootstocks to provide protection against pests and pathogens and to increase the growth performance of the vines. Now I put a couple of links below with more description on uh, rootstock, but rootstocks are essentially genetically engineered and grown to help the plants grow much better. And they have a graft union on the top where they actually graft the Cabernet, the Grenache, the Zinfandel onto the graft, onto the rootstock. After some research and discussion with the supplier that I got my rootstock from, 11 was the rootstock that I needed for my environment. 1103P rootstock has a high resistance to disease and there, it's adapted to our ascetic, sandy soils here in the Southwest United States. 1103P is also very heat and drought tolerant, which is really critical here at our backyard vineyard project. As you can see here in this video, you can really see the rootstock, the graft union. You can see where the Cabernet Sauvignon was grafted into the rootstock along with the vines. Rootstock or our vines were sent to us in a plain old paper box. Now, I was hoping for a little more pizzazz and <laughs> my anticipation was so high, just getting a plain old paper box was somewhat um, disappointing, <laughs> to say the least. The, in the instructions said to keep the box in a cool, dry location for about seven to 10 days. We actually kept them probably for about 14 days, maybe a little more, before we were able to start planting here the last week of March. The vines are shipped in sawdust to keep the roots moist as long as possible while stored in the box. Remember, they are, they're coming to us fairly cool and they were dormant, so we wanted to keep them dormant as long as possible. They're shipped in bundles of 25, and each bundle is obviously labeled with what variety of grape they actually are. The next step was to take the rootstock and the vines and actually clip the roots. We then had to cut the roots to stimulate growth from the fresh cuts on the root. We placed each root into a bucket of water. We then let the roots sit in the water for about 24 hours. We clip the roots about a hand width in length as we place them in the bucket of water. Just a simple haircut, as the distributor told me. We remove them from the box and bundles of 25, so I kept those same numbers. I kept 25 in a bucket, which worked out pretty good. And we end up having some roots soak were soaking in these buckets for about 72 hours, which the distributor said was okay, as long as we didn't let it go too long. Um, it worked out all right, all of our roots are doing real well, well. Well, now that I have all of my root stock sitting here in buckets, like I said, they were sitting for about 24 hours or so as we started to plant. So we took each bucket of about 25 and we were planting in groups of 25. As we discussed in chapter three, we pre-dug all of the holes for the vines quite a while ago. And they were all about 18 inches wide, maybe a little more, 18 inches deep. Now, we did the soil testing. The soil testing came back and told us that we needed organic matter. And following the recommendations of the company that we did the soil test for, they recommended we put about, about, about a pound of manure around each vine. So what we ended up doing was we took a couple shovelfuls of manure, placed it in the holes, and then, um, and that was several weeks before we planted. And then we, for about a week before we planted, we let the irrigation system soak up the holes. So now we've got 
nice moist holes with some fertilizer in it and it worked out really well for us to start planting our vines. As I said, there's tons of videos on how to plant rootstock. I'm gonna show you what we did with our holes and what we did with our vineyard here. The first thing we did was we went to, as we came to each hole, we essentially pulled all the manure out and mixed it in with the dirt that came from that hole, giving us about a 70-30 mixture for us to plant the vines with. The other recommendation that we got from the soil testing company was to come back about an eight week period in about eight weeks and put some 10-10-10 fertilizer around each one of the vines. So we'll do that when we get to the eight week mark. So as we were discussing the vineyard with the supplier, they said that we should hold back about 10% of the vines just in case some of the vines were to die that we would be able to have replacements. I didn't do 10%, I actually only did 10. Five Grenache and five Cabernet. This is a Grenache vine that we planted about a month ago in this pot to save for later. Um, I do have a couple of Grenache and a couple of Cabernet Sauvignon that hasn't really broke bud yet, and so that concerns me. But you can see here, you can see right here, hopefully on the camera, there's the scion, there's our rootstock. And you can see how it's broken out pretty nicely on this. So what was the process we went through in planting our vines? When I was down in Temecula at one of the wineries talking about my vineyard with a couple of them, they came back and highly recommended I use a product called Mycormix for a, as a root stimulator and a, adds nutrition to the roots as it's growing. Here's a description of what Mycormix is. So what we did was the first step in this whole process after we dug out the hole was to put in about a tablespoon, we took a handful of mycormics and dropped it in the hole. That was the first step in the process. Number two, we then took some of our nice crushed up glass and spread some glass across the bottom of the hole. Then our next step obviously was to put in some dirt. So we put some dirt in the hole we have with our glass and mycormics, and then we added in our vine. We wanted to make sure that the graft union was about a hands width above ground and we wanted the vines to be going downward and I, I kind of will explain that in a second once we got that in we added some more glass we added some more dirt um, and it also at that point we added in my watering tube which I ex talked about in a previous video this watering tube will get water directly to the roots and has worked out phenomenally well for our process so now I've got the McCormick's, I've got glass, some dirt, we put the watering tube in, I've got my vine in, and I just keep adding dirt and glass, dirt and glass. And at one point I actually pull up on the vine. I actually grabbed the vine like this and pulled up on the vine because I wanted the roots to go down. You want the roots to be pointed downward so you get optimal growth as deep as possible on the vines. And we kept going through this process all the way up until we had a finished product. I now have a grapevine in the ground, protected from gophers, and with all the nutrients it needs to get going. Newer mycormics, some good soil, nice wide deep holes. So we got everything ready to go and we got some, some vines ready to go and start planting. We then added in the vine sleeves are bamboo stakes to hold the sleeves in place and give the vine some support as they grow. We have an issue here with rabbits, so those sleeves are used also to keep the damn little rabbits away from my new plants and keep them safe while they mature. We also put the drip hose into the watering tube for the irrigation at this point. So here in here in section one, you can see our vineyard all planted and ready to go. The sleeves are in place, 
the bamboo stakes are in place. We've placed irrigation tubes into the watering tubes. And we are covering the area with mulch a little later, but it looks pretty good at this point. As I said, we did the planting about a little over three weeks ago. And I want to show you a picture here. This is a picture of one of the vines about a week after we planted it. it. I pulled the sleeve off to take a look to see what the growth was. And this is what it was about a week into it. Very nice little shoots. You can see the rootstock with the cyan about a hand's width up. Planted really nicely, but this one was growing really good. A couple of days ago, I pulled the sleeve off of this particular vine to take a look. This is a really good example of how, how the vines are growing. I've got two good shoots out of this vine growing up pretty well. Looks really good. It looks a lot like this one. This one has been planted about four weeks ago. I've got a main shoot coming up and a side shoot and my backup shoot. So I've got two shoots. I've got them staked up to my bamboo shoot here, growing really well. So being three and a half, four weeks into this, we're, we've got a, we, we're very uh, enthusiastic about our vineyard at this point. So it's been almost a month since we planted the vines. And there are two items that have made a huge impact in the grand scheme of things for our vineyard. Number one, other watering tubes. I really believe that we are saving a lot more water than I had planned. I'm not really watering as much as I thought I had to because we're taking that water and putting it directly down to the root system. Now, I made a mistake with these watering tubes. As you can see here in this picture, this watering tube is about a, is a three quarter inch PVC pipe. I shouldn't be using three quarter. I really should be using inch, inch and a quarter. I need bigger watering tubes to get more water down there. But these watering tubes are a godsend. And number two, glass. Putting glass with all of my plantings has saved me a ton of money in not losing plants. You can see here in this picture, about two weeks after we planted, I immediately had some evidence of gophers. Since then, I was able to remove that gopher, but they popped up and I know they're nowhere near the vines. So the glass has been phenomenal in saving my vines. Well, that's it for the planting. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, we're gonna do a little recap of the vines when they get to about two months or so, and we'll show the vines and the growth we've seen. We really enjoy having you join us. Again, we're building the Gavilan Hills Vineyard here at Paradise Ranch. Please join us. Click the subscribe button below and join us on our adventure. This is Jeff. Until next time, we're out.